Hey, what's going on? And uh, thanks for coming back and watching uh, my latest edition of Custom Corner. <clears throat> As you can tell, the subject for today is the uh, Mark 30 something Red Snapper Hot Toys. Uh, this was their second Hot Toys Power Pose figure. The, uh, the first was the Mark 42. The Mark 42, there was no way in hell I was buying that. Um, hot Toys not hot statues. I want them to make action figures, poseable toys, something I can manipulate. Um, statues, I like statues, but I, that's not what I buy hot toys figures for. So anyway, this was the second power pose, which uh, this one actually had articulation. Like ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, uh, elbows, and uh, the pinchers and the, and the neck and head. Um, and it looked really nice and the price was pretty good. It was a nice figure, but I, um, I just saw so much more potential and saw that I could do so many things with it and make me like it a bunch more. So I'll, I'll tell you what I actually did. Uh, to start off with, um, this guy's whole thing for me that made him cool was the arms. And uh, that's what set him apart from the rest. And um, he's got these cool pinchers and blah, blah, blah. And he's got these like extended arms, but they didn't do anything past that. I mean, well, they also light up and stuff, but he's got little arc reactors on it or uh, repulsors on it. But uh, so what I did was actually he had uh, stationary plastic shocks on his arms and I actually replaced them and uh, he now has telescoping arms and uh, they actually go out pretty damn far and they go back in of course and it's I did it on both sides so there you go and they're pretty pretty tight because they're new but actually the pistons or stabilizer shocks whatever you want to call them in the arms they're actually chrome over steel so they're metal and they're really cool they're super awesome and uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was pretty, pretty uh, pain in the butt to get the other ones off and these put on. And I wanted them to, you know, be as, as similar looking as, you know, I, want, I didn't want, to want people to look at it and automatically see something was done to it. So, but I think they came out really well. And let me close those up. And, um, of course, everything's still, you know, his lights in his hands and all that. None of that stuff is affected at all. Um, and then uh, after I did that, I was like, um, you know, the big, the big thing about this figure that really made me kind of like, ugh. The part that bothered me the most was his actual lack of articulation in throughout the entire body there was nothing if it wasn't one of his uh, appendages or his head or there was no articulation anywhere in the whole body so I went I took this thing apart I took this thing apart down to this is the actual master bolt and screw that was holding this guy together at the very core that was the internal central you had to take this guy completely apart to get this thing out. And uh, so that's that's that guy. And I replaced it with that one. So this is what he's got inside, holding everything together now, instead of this. And uh, it's got a nice big bolt on it. Nice, nice big, big, sturdy uh, nut and bolt set. So, I took this guy completely apart because I wanted to give him some articulation and if you look really closely I don't know if you can see that but I'm gonna do close-ups with rotation anyway what I decided to do is replace all of his shock stabilizers struts whatever you want to call them slider shafts I replaced all of them with uh, chrome chromed uh, steel functional 
uh, stabilizer bars, whatever you want to call them, uh, uh, articulation linkage. Um, and although he doesn't have much, he's a huge bulky guy anyway, but he actually does have a rotation in his body now. Yay! So he's not just, and, and the thing was, Hot Toys made this guy, and they gave him, a, he was like partially twisted and all stationary. I don't know, at least if they made him straight, it might not have, but he was kind of twisted, like. But uh, anyway, that was a massive, massive project. I took, on his torso alone, around his core, there is there are 12 uh, shocks, 12, eight, uh, eight of which are actually functional now. There's four on the right and four on the left that actually function, compress, and expand when you uh, move his waist. When you, actually, it's actually his upper body that swivels or over his waist. But uh, the four floating uh, piston shafts, slider shafts, whatever you want. The four floating ones, well, they're actually floating now. They weren't floating on the original toy. The flo four floating ones are actually functional, and then he has two on either side that are just just pressed up against his waist that don't function those never did function and i didn't care to make them function but the four that were floating um they didn't n none of them functioned at all because he had no articulation i'll show you what i took out of there it's pretty funny but these are the actual old this is all of the old these are the arm pistons for where that held onto his uh claws so look how short these were. I mean, if you notice, I made these pretty much exactly the same size that, the, that they were when it's fully compressed, because this actual area here would actually meet up to about where that gray area is. So they're pretty much exactly the same. I also put the, the breaking point in the exact same spot also. I tried to really stay as close as possible. Um, but then you got that full, about three inches extra of extension, which really, it makes the arms really long. It's, it's pretty cool. So uh, these were those guys, and these were like his original shocks and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was just a solid piece of plastic with no, I mean, the detail on it isn't even great. Um, altogether, the figure was very well detailed, but little things like this, I mean, these little shocks, they were just, basically glued to the side of the body and the whole body was static and it was all stiff and he was kind of turned and <clears throat> it's it's really cool it was a really cool figure to begin with but once something like this is done to it and makes give him articulation on the core on his body and then of course I went around and I put steel in the back leg shocks there see that's a steel shock now too same thing both legs I also if you could see in those ankles really well, there's steel shock in the ankles also. Those don't function, but I went and replaced them because they were there. The only actual shocks I did not replace with steel shocks or whatever you want to call them, uh, control links, uh, stabilizers, are the four, the two on the front and the two on the rear of his biceps. The reason being that those were not replaced were because those would actually cause those are, those are structurally uh, necessary for the biceps. If you cut those away, you're going to have big gaping holes on the biceps. They basically compose of the front and the rear of the biceps. So cutting those away, it was kind of like, I was just going to have to build completely new biceps, which I do fabricate parts for stuff like this all the time, but they're so hidden and they're so, they weren't very important because they serve no functional purpose either. I just left them there and I said, you know what, this is this is enough. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought he was super damn freaking badass as it was anyway. But also, um, I did forget one more thing I did, which was really cool. If you notice, he's got the little holes in his feet there. Of course, I had to go and uh, what are those power switches? Here, okay, now I see the switch. I just couldn't see it before. One, and where's the switch again? And here's the other. Yeah, buddy. I had to do that. Of course, I didn't mess with any of the articulation or anything. Everything is completely uh, internal to his feet as well. 
Um, there's a little tiny power switch I'll show you in photos, which I can only reach with my pinky. Um, but it's all good. Power switch, the light, everything, the battery source, everything is inside of the feet. Um, beside, for, beside the fact that I actually have to semi take apart the feet to replace the batteries, um, which is kind of like, eh, but you know what? Come on, this Iron Man has everything. He has, now he's got the, you know, the, the light up, hands, feet, chest, helmet, everything. And uh, they just don't make them like that. You, you, you might get you might get lucky and get light up feet on one one or two figures here or there, but they just like come on man, light it all up. There we go. Isn't that come on man? Look at that. Yeah, he's got the feet and everything. This guy could actually take off and fly away and kick some ass. He's got functional functional articulated upper body now with beautiful functioning uh, uh, chromed over steel suspension built all over the place. And uh, it took me about a solid week. With me, uh, it took me literally six days. Uh, we figured, Wendy and I, we clocked how long it would take, how long it took me to do this. Um, and that's like all day and going to sleep really late in the wee hours of the morning. But that's it. That's what he does. That's still looks beautiful to me. I mean, it looks way better, man. When you look at the way this body area looks, now as opposed to the way it was originally manufactured this thing kicks some serious ass and he's got a bunch of metal a bunch of bunch more metal in the construction of them that isn't just the screws um so this actually went from one of my eh, not so favorite iron man figures to absolutely one of the coolest iron man figures ever from him to turn these off scene. so there are 12 12 uh, new uh, suspension links or control links on his body. There are 12 on his body here, eight of which are fully functional. Then you got the two on his arms or on his extend, uh, his uh, telescoping arms. Those are also functional. So that's 12, that's 16, 12 of which are functional. And then we have two more functional on the behind his knees so that's 14 of of uh 18 and then we have the two ankles so all together that's 12 that's 20 new uh suspension or control links and uh, eight, nine, uh 14 of which are functional which is really cool now i know where the switch is so it isn't so hard to turn them off there's the other switch I literally just finished working on this guy uh, just a couple of hours ago. I just finished up these behind the uh, behind the knee uh, suspension. I just did that uh, just a couple of hours ago. So yeah, that's him. Uh, it's a good six days of work. This guy is easily one of my favorite and badass, coolest Iron Man figures now. Um, the only thing I might do to him still is get some articulated hands and put them in there. Oh yeah, and these guys now too, these guys are adjustable as well. I'm not gonna exactly move it right now because it's a tight fit, but I can slide these guys up and down so I can switch the inner hands, which is kind of cool because I want to put some, get some uh, articulated hands in there. So uh, yeah, I hope you uh, guys think that was worth my time, think it's cool and, and uh, yeah. That's my latest and probably one of my, yeah, this one's definitely one of my much, much, much cooler uh, modifications for a figure. And uh, that whole that whole uh, core section, the way that thing moves and all the suspension built in there and it all being metal and the telescoping arms and even, I guess, even the, the light up, you know, the uh, repulsors in the feet. The, we need more Iron Man figures like that. We need more... You know, hot toys for me. You know, I don't want hot toys to take away or or uh, or, or uh, not continue to do or to or to you know uh, imply or not imply or, or to uh, incorporate features into 
you know, new stuff. I don't want them to take stuff out. I want them to continue to add and improve and make things bigger and better because their prices are going up, you know what? And for me to spend my lazy ass, earn money, you know, I want it to be dope. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna keep doing cool stuff like this and uh, stay tuned for the responses coming up. Peace. Hey everybody, what's up? This is uh, these are the this these are the responses for the for the for the comments left on. I believe it was the storm shadow with the uh, storm shadow I did with the custom uh, rotating eyes, my DX storm shadow. So. Thanks, thanks to you guys uh, beforehand for watching and uh, commenting and constructive criticism, whatever you have, uh, support anything on my videos or on our videos at The Bomb Show and at Hot Chicks Cool Toy Review. So, start off with Sean Henry. I'm just saying, enjoy watching YouTube videos, enjoy, enjoy the customers. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but... Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the customs, and uh, yeah, thanks for commenting. Uh, moving along, moving along, Tigrillo, Tigrillo, not sure who that is. Sometimes it is better to work with figures that are cheap. You may have many opportunities to prove them and create a masterpiece. Absolutely, I don't discriminate. I customize, I've, I've customized stuff, man, like really nice custom jobs on cheap ass toys in the past, so. Although I wouldn't consider the Sideshow Storm Shadow cheap, but less definitely less expensive than the Hot Toy Storm Shadow. But yeah, sometimes you create some cool ass stuff. So uh, thanks, thanks Tigrillo, Tigrillo. War Machine, and moving on, War Machine Vengeance. Damn, you customized articulated eyes. Amazing work, dude. Yes, I did. And thank you very much for the compliment. And I, I, I agree, the Storm Shadow came out really cool. Wasn't that hard of a custom job either. It wasn't, wasn't too, too crazy. Moving on, Raiden682. Oh, and thanks for the comments, bro. Raiden682. Can't wait to get this figure. He's an awesome figure. I'm sure you'll love it when you get it. And next up, we go to... Thanks for the comment. Next up, we go to Gifted Monkey. Great job, bro. Loving those custom eyes off the chain. Thank you very much. Yes. I wish Sideshow would do more stuff with... Uh, uh, I wish they would create more head sculpts the way they did that storm shadow because I would I would just I would convert them to DXs man I would convert their eyes. Uh, and those were from the uh, Hot Chick School Toy Review uh, comments. And now we're moving over to the the Bomb Show comments. Uh, so I start at the bottom. Don Huck, great custom as usual, man. Thanks a lot, Don. And I put as much into these things as I can. I really try my best. So thanks for watching and supporting. Me. Vuk Markovic, Vuk Markovic, or Markovic. Hi Jason, yes you are right, I am new in all of this. I started watching you maybe seven, eight months ago. Very like your job. You make every episode very interesting and that is most important to me. Uh, great custom again, I am not a big fan of this figure but it looks awesome, great job again. Regards from Montenegro, Montenegro, Montenegro. Anyway, thanks, thanks Vuk, or Vuk. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, or Markovic, or Markovic, but yeah, thanks, man, and uh, <clears throat> I, I very much appreciate that you point out and uh, say that I put a lot of, uh, make you know, try to make the episodes very interesting, because I do, I mean, I, I, I like to be able to watch it afterward and, 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 you know, see that there was, you know, I put something into it that it's worth watching myself, you know, and I make the video, so. But uh, thanks for watching, thanks for support, thanks for commenting. Next up, we have Gilbert Montoya. J, my man, you're just one bad mother effer. <laughs> thanks, Gil Montoya. Um, and yeah, man, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep working at it and keep busting out these customs and stuff, and hopefully keep getting better. Next up, the waste time continuum. Nice work, very impressive. Commander Wolf, eye articulation next. <clears throat> Unfortunately, no. Uh, his head was constructed in a different way that it's not very possible. I did try though. I can do it, but it's not going to be with the eyes that Sideshow originally intended him to have. I would have to use alternate eyes because the eyes included in the wolf head are, uh, they're on a flat plate with just the very front of the eyes, uh, whereas 
the other eyes, the eyes in the storm shadow, it was half a circle, half of a of a of a, uh, of a sphere built onto a larger piece of plastic that kept both spheres together. So I was able to carve out the rest of the eyeball and the parts I needed to make solid, full moving eyes, and then just build the wing paper and all that stuff. But no, unfortunately, I I would. Pretty much any sideshow figures that they make that it's possible or that it isn't going to be impossible, I'll probably do. Um, you know, the sideshow is good with that, man. They make their stuff so accessible. Velcro and everything. They don't glue shit down. They don't glue things down. They don't, you know, they put screws and stuff. They, they make it nowhere near as difficult as, say, Hot Toys. Hot Toys makes it so impossible for customizers to mess with their stuff. Okay, but um, thanks, man. Thanks for the comment. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Oh wait. Let me let me see. He keeps he keeps going. Oh, uh, I agree with you 100% about the Hot Toy Storm Shadow. He always looked like he came straight out of an 80s Michael Jackson video. That that's that. Uh, uh, if you really pay attention to it, that's Hot Toy Storm Shadow outfit looks damn similar to uh, Michael Jackson uh, and his. Uh, oh my goodness, where is it again? Captain EO, his Captain EO costume. Look at that video and tell me that they aren't so damn. There's a striking resemblance between the two. But uh, I don't have the head. Uh, the only thing I don't like about Storm Shadow is the head. And the uh, only thing I like about the Hot Toys Storm Shadow is the head. <laughs> I was wondering if it's possible to swap the head so I can get the Hot Toys head on the sideshow figure. Yes. Uh, holla at me if you have the time to check it out. Keep up the good work, brother. Thank you, brother, and I will definitely keep up that good work. As long as there's people, you know, people appreciate what I'm doing, I'm going to do it because I love doing it anyway. I will be doing it anyway, and if I get you guys commenting and, and enjoying it, I'm going to keep posting the videos and stuff because I have tons of other uh, customs I haven't done videos. But yes, the Hot Toys and Sideshow Storm Shadow Heads are interchangeable. However, the Sideshow Storm Shadow Head disconnects at the neck. Whereas the Hot Toys figure, the entire head and neck are one piece. So you have to use the entire neck and head of the Sideshow Storm Shadow uh, to swap out the Hot Toys because the Hot Toys neck is connected. But they're both perfectly interchangeable. The ball joints fit perfectly. Um, and thanks for the comment. Moving on, uh, Kraken 2000, nice eye job. But I really want to see the dog go at the lightsaber again. Great work. I love to watch your stuff when I work on my customs. I'm principally turning Barbie into a kick-ass set of action figures. I really want to install eyes like that. Yeah, I just I, we got a new figure too of uh, this female, and it's actually a kit. It's like a kit bash thing where you just get a body and you throw this. The the little set comes with a head. It comes with clothing. It comes with you know some accessories, whatever. And this thing, it's like a it's like a sixty dollar set or whatever. So you know, you figure you add a, a twenty thirty dollar body to it. It's less than a hundred bucks. This figure actually has articulated eyes, same as the Hulk uh, Hot Toys Hulk figure, where each eye is on its own independent control stick. But it has posable eyes. Really cool figure. Um, I'll probably do something with it, do a video or something with it. But it's really nice. I don't understand why all these figures don't have posable eyes. In my, you know. If, if, my humble opinion, I mean, for the, the, the cost of the figures, I would think they would all have controllable eyes. Um, I got, like I said, we just got a $60 deal and it has posable eyes. Um, um, personally, yeah, man, and awesome, awesome that you're customizing stuff and, and, and messing with Barbies. I've actually done some stuff with really, really inexpensive figures like that, too. And you know what? It doesn't matter, man. If you make something cool, you make something cool. And thanks for commenting and everything, bro. <clears throat> Um, PJ's play Star Wars next. It was, uh, that is way cool, dog. You gave Sideshow their first DX. You're a customizing god, and we're not worthy. Haha. -ha. Can't wait to see the next customs you got cooking. Much love to you, Wendy, and Typhoon Toys. Peace. Thank you very much, my man. Uh, that's my, that's my nizzle P. Jizzle from the Vizzle. <laughs> so what's up to the whole family? Um, this guy knows. This guy, uh, PJ is actually, uh, a customer of some of my customs. He's actually taking some of those off of my hand. He actually took, he actually took the Darth Malgus off of my hands. I wish I still had that, and I'm so damn lazy to make another one. <laughs> but thanks for the comment, my man. We'll talk. You know how we do. 
Uh, next up, we have the Dark Knight 01. Wow, great custom work, Jay. The eyes turned out great. I'm really enjoying the custom corner videos. Thanks for sharing. I'm glad you're enjoying them, which is and then is exactly the reason why I keep making these videos. Um, I like showing the stuff. You know, if people are interested and they enjoy watching what I do, cool. I'm gonna keep putting them up. And thanks for the comment, bro. Uh, Stiff Kitten's cool idea, but the purse has worn off me, especially as my Batman 89 DX broke after moving it just once. You really should get the Cobra Viper best G.I. Joe figure released so far, in my opinion, and the Crimson Guard, and off the top of the question, I have noticed that since you have opened your shop up, you no longer get the exclusive, be it Sideshow or Hot Toys. Do you miss them? Uh, yeah, I do miss a lot of exclusives, but I, I still get exclusives. I might not review exclusive stuff, but we still get, like, we got, like, the, you know, the Mark 7, the Battle Damage, the, uh, the Hulk Bruce Banner exclusive. We still get exclusive. I just, in my opinion, if the exclusive is a, a little gun or some, it, it, in my opinion, it's not worth paying full retail because obviously we get stuff wholesale because we're dealers now. And a lot of the time the exclusive just is doesn't, it doesn't justify the extra price cost. And a lot of the times I do stuff to make mines one of a kind anyway. So like obviously like this red snapper, like the storm shadow, like a lot of things that I do with a lot of my figures, it makes, in my opinion, it makes them much cooler than the exclusives. Um, I love when they do exclusive stuff like a base with a different logo on it because that totally means absolutely nothing to me. When it was the Darth Malgus, something like that, I got the exclusive uh, uh, again because he had the uh, non-battle damage head. That was very important to me, so I got that exclusive. So, you know, it really depends on the figure and what the exclusive item is. Um, some of them I have not gotten, I missed, and I'm upset about it. The Darth Vader, the new Darth Vader, Sideshow Vader. I really wanted the exclusive on that. However, I did some really cool damn customizing to that that makes it way cooler than the exclusive. I haven't done a video on them yet, but anyway, and the purrs has worn off on you. Sorry about that. Sorry about your Batman. Um, you should try to get it fixed or uh, there are people that can fix them out there. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, for me, the purrs is posable eyes is absolutely the coolest feature ever put into any action figure. And I would be very disappointed if they stopped doing that. I don't I don't understand why Enterbase started with posable eyes on figures and then got rid of it. Yes, it they should make them stronger. Absolutely. Hot Toys should do something better. I mean, just the, just the control linkage pieces, just make those in, 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 in a uh, in a aluminum. That'll be cheap and it, it'll last forever. I don't understand why they don't do that. I mean, I do understand because then they would last forever, but I love the purrs and I'm, I'm sorry about your, uh, to hear about your 89 Batman. I did have one DX figure that did break on me, but I fixed it, so. But, um, uh, Thanks, thanks, Stiff Kid. Uh, next up, Steve Monreal, and sorry, uh, thanks for the comment, and sorry about your uh, your uh, misfortune with the figure. Um, next up, uh, Steve Monreal, that Sideshow version looks aggressive, like it should, great job on it. I agree, Storm Shadow should look like a badass, he shouldn't look like a metrosexual dude just uh, going to the club or whatever. <laughs> but thanks for the comment, much appreciated. And last but not least, Epic Flesh Time, fantastic modification on the Storm Shadow, thanks the advice on doing customizing much appreciated take care i hope i didn't re reply to these comments somewhere else and i'm off track on what videos i should be responding to but thank you i appreciate the compliment and i will continue to do these custom videos and classic videos and the bomb shows uh casual videos and the bomb show elite videos on top of other things i've been trying to work on but Hope you guys in, really enjoyed this, and I hope you continue to watch, and thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, and peace and love until next time, guys. Take care. Custom